in simple words remember osmolality is the number of dissolved particles in 1 kg of a solution here our solution will be blood or urine and the solutes or the dissolved particles are the electrolytes the proteins the glucose which may be found in the blood or urine the concentration of particles will be described with osmoles and this is calculated in the labs so now suppose that we have 10 osmoles of dissolved particles in 1 kg of water that means that the osmolality is 10 osmoles per kg in diabetes insipidus only the amount of water will change and so here we will just change the amount of water and see what happens to the osmolality so now suppose that we increase the amount of water from 1 kg to 2 kg without changing the number of particles so now our osmolality will be 10 osmoles of particle is present in 2 kg or 5 milli osmoles per kg of the particle is present hence we understand that if we are only increasing the amount of water in a solution we are just decreasing the osmolality hence a diluted solution means a solution with decreased osmolality now we'll quickly decrease the amount of water and see what happens so if we decrease the amount of water from 1 kg to half kg the osmolality will become 10 divided by 0.5 or 20 milli osmoles per kg hence we see that on decreasing the amount of water we are increasing the osmolality hence a concentrated solution means a concentration of higher osmolality so in conclusion just remember that low osmolality means if we have added more water or the solution is diluted higher osmolality means the water has been removed from the solution so now let's look at adh how it is produced what are its functions and how it affects the osmolality antidiuretic hormone also known as vasopressin is produced in the hypothalamic pituitary axis any hyperosmolar state like dehydration or any cause of volume depletion or hypovolemia in the body stimulates the supraoptic nuclei of the hypothalamus the hypothalamus will start production of the adh and this will be stored in the posterior pituitary in the hyperosmolar state this adh will be released into the blood circulation and via the blood circulation it will reach the kidneys Kidneys as we know are made up of multiple nephrons which use the blood and filter it to make the urine. We should remember that the nephron is surrounded all around by blood vessels. The nephrons continue to remove the waste material from the blood and add it to the urine. This process is known as secretion. Similarly, the nephrons will continue to add the useful material back into the blood. This is known as reabsorption. Now coming back to ADH, ADH mainly acts on the collecting tubule and some part of the distal tubule. In the collecting tubule, we have channels known as aquaporin channels which are normally enclosed within their vesicles. When ADH binds to its receptor in the collecting tubule, it causes release of the aquaporin channels from their vesicles. The aquaporin channels go and bind to its receptor and cause free flow of water from the collecting tubule back into the blood. So now let's see how the ADH is going to affect the osmolality of blood and urine. So as we saw the ADH is causing the removal of water from the urine and adding it to the blood. So the urine here becomes concentrated or there is an increase in osmolality as we saw earlier. Similarly addition of water to the blood causes decrease in the plasma osmolality as there is dilution. In conclusion, ADH causes decrease in the blood or plasma osmolality and increase in the osmolality of urine. Now let's see what happens if there is no ADH or ADH is present but it is not functioning. That is, it is a case of diabetes insipidus. Therefore, in diabetes insipidus, the aquaporin channels will remain trapped inside their vesicles. Because of this, there is lesser water reabsorption from the collecting tubule back into the blood vessels. Hence, the water in the urine is more and therefore, the urine is diluted or urine is of lower osmolality. Also, the patient will have polyuria. There is decreased water reabsorption into the blood vessel and therefore, the water inside the intravascular spaces is less and therefore, the it is more concentrated and hence the plasma osmolality is higher. Therefore, in diabetes insipidus, you have higher plasma osmolality, lower urine osmolality and polyuria. 
Details of the topic diabetes insipidus is present in part 2 of the series. Please go and watch that.